On July 19, 1913, in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, Algernon Charles and Regina Lineker brought into the world Mary Catherine Lineker. At a very young age, Mary Catherine, bitten by the acting bug, partook in summer theater, which eventually led her to the NYU Academy of Dramatic Arts. She began acting on the Broadway stage and soon was discovered by Hollywood screen agents. By her early 20s, her father had passed on. Regina took her daughter, Mary Catherine, and relocated to the Hollywood Hills. This move would mean the first of several name changes as Mary Catherine became Kay Lineker. On June 7, 1953, Kay took her husband Howard's name and continued her career and life as Kate Phillips. Benedictine, please. So we actually developed a course called the uh, Films of Kate Phillips. It was a fascinating course because she was, in my opinion, she was an A actress in B films. You want to know about a girl named Eve Cairo? Uh, she was teaching uh, script writing and she was also teaching some theater classes at that point too. She was teaching makeup. What would you suggest to bring out the color of my eyes? I should think a touch more orange in your lip rouge would do it. I met her through the department, through Larry Benequist and Bob Gunther, and, and taking her uh, screenwriting class. She really helped to raise so many people's uh, self-esteem. It was really uh, astounding, the following she had. The first film that I made, which is called The Murder of Dr. Harrigan, I play a nurse. You've proposed in elevators and ambulances, but I won't give you an answer until you pick the one place I consider most fitting for your actions. Swell, where's that? The psychopathic ward. I had been saying to my agent, I want to do a western. I want to do a western. Turn around. Put your hands back here. My... Agent said, Kate, the only thing that happens to an actress in a Western is you stand by the corral fence and wave goodbye to him as he rides off into the sunset. I wouldn't marry you if you were the last man on earth. You're just not worth two hoops. You take that dink and get out of here and don't ever let me see you again as long as I live. One of the things that really impressed me was it was written by a woman, which was not usual in those days. There were very, very few women writers. She wrote scripts for Dr. Kildare. She told me she wrote scripts for the I Remember Mama show, which I used to watch as a little kid. And unfortunately, they were never kinescoped, so they don't exist. In the case of The Blob, <laughs> that, that silicone creature becomes a, an instrument of uniting um, two generations. And that was her plan. It didn't surprise me when she said that. Just embedded in her life is the need for people to, to get on, to feel empowered, and to make it work and to, to, to fill out their dreams. I really think so. She was the type of person that would um, always make everyone feel big and um, never make them feel small. And, uh, and no matter who you were, everybody was a valid person with, with emotions and desires and feelings and and she just was very good at helping people to point that out. He told me the title of the piece is The Girl from Mandalay. The part she liked the most was The Girl from Mandalay. She had a leading role in that, a very important role, and, and that's where she played with Conrad Nagel, who she, you know, she was friends with at the time. In this picture, uh, just take note of my cleavage. I never had anything much in my life to lose. Like that. Whatever I played, I was a nice girl. 
and um, that's kind of an uninteresting label to get stuck on you. Know something? If you had brown eyes, you'd be a very dangerous person. I have brown eyes. I know it. Aren't you afraid? Kate was an actress, a teacher, but more importantly, she was a mother and a grandmother for her daughter Gina, her son Bill, and her four grandsons, Jason, David, Matthew, and Ian. Kate spent many years at Keene State College teaching classical Hollywood cinema, genre and director courses, screenwriting, and even makeup. Kate was involved in several student films, such as Terrence, by Joshua LeBlanc. I'm sorry to bother you, Terrence, but do you have any maple syrup or chocolate sauce that I could borrow? Oh, I oh, hope, I hope he, has he has some. some. It's, been it's been such, such a long, long time, time since, since I gave I Harry, Harry a tongue bath. bath. Maid of Honor by Jesse Anderson and El Dorado by Bridget Cannell. Where can it be, this land of El Dorado? Kate's final contribution was taking part in a current experimental film by Lance Levesque, entitled, What is Art? Taking an idea, a thought, an imagination. Well, how do I look? She was so beautiful. Empowering, beautiful, and always hopeful. A really uh, wonderful person. And this is um, going to leave a big hole in all of us for for a while. And we'll be very deeply missed. Yeah.